Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I am Coach Castle, and today, back by popular demand, is a biomechanical breakdown of the kettlebell. And in today's video, I'll be explaining three different variations of the kettlebell swing, as well as covering the simple one-handed swing and two-handed swing that you see here. The muscles which are being trained, correct posture, as well as common misconceptions or problems, and how to correct them. To begin with, the kettlebell swing is a full body movement, requiring good balance, hand-eye coordination, as well as a robust cardiovascular system to perform for any length of time. It is both a closed chain movement, as well as an open chain movement. Your lower body will of course be fixed to the floor with your feet on top of it, making it a closed chain movement, and your upper arms will be free to move, making that an open chain movement. Some of the first things to address is that this is not a good movement if your goal is muscle building of your legs or your glutes or anything of that nature. There are far superior movements biomechanically as well as different time under tension principles to be applied in regards to muscle building or hypertrophy. However, the kettlebell swing is an extremely effective movement for learning multiple movement patterns, correcting your posture and spinal health, getting a better proceptive feel for your body, correcting breathing patterns, learning how to breathe with a braced core, rapidly improving your cardiovascular health, as well as many other health benefits. However, like with all exercise, if not performed correctly, you will not be targeting the very muscles and systems that you're attempting to work, and you may actually be damaging yourself. So, let's get into breaking down the kettlebell swing and muscles involved so that this doesn't happen. Now, the first one is the one-arm kettlebell swing, where both legs are active. The second one combines extension and rotation of the pelvis and thoracic spine, and it creates a high load on the gluteus maximus and hip external rotators. Transferring body weight to the opposite leg, most of the load is on the opposite leg muscle, and in this video, it's the right leg. The left leg only provides support and stability in this case. In variation three, you can see the integration of the up and down movements. The opposite leg is active, unlike the previous variations. Load on the quadriceps is also relatively high. Here you can clearly see the integration of the up and down movements and the effect that they have on the movement of the kettlebell by lowering yourself and then raising yourself rapidly while maintaining a vertical torso and your arms are essentially limp or inactive ropes simply gripping the kettlebell. You basically turn yourself into a pendulum. The kettlebell will add additional load at the conclusion of the movement and a diminishing load as you are raising yourself. Here you can see a comparison between squat style swing and the hip hinge style swing. In the hip hinge style swing, you will be more focused on allowing the forearms to bump against your quadriceps and literally thrusting your hips forward to create the movement pattern. Versus in the squat style variation, it is more quadriceps and glute dominant, primarily focused on the actual squatting movement or quad extension. Of course, your glutes are used to a degree as well. However, the focus will be on squatting with good form to create the curvature increasing load at the conclusion and diminishing load at the top. The muscles you will be primarily attempting to target will be the ones alongside the superficial back line or posterior chain, your rector spinal as well, as well as your gluteus maximus. Your quadriceps and hamstrings to a degree, of course, your abdominals, transverse abdominis, obliques, and the rest of your core stabilizers will come into play for anti-rotational movements, such as the one-arm swing. And of course, they will always be in play while you are breathing and bracing during this movement. Now let's do a brief dive into the biomechanics of how these muscles actually function when performing a kettlebell squat. Now, as it so happens, when performing the kettlebell squat, it is essentially the same as when performing a squat. The only difference will be the kettlebell will be adding momentum or slightly increasing the load at the conclusion of the movement. Now what would happen if you were to look at a skeleton without all of the muscles attached to it? Well, pretty simple, it would collapse. So let's decide what muscles do we have to add to the skeleton in order to get it back up into standing position. The first muscle we would connect to the bones would be the quadriceps. One side connects to the tibia, 
and the other to the femur and the pelvis. Now, let's activate the muscle and see what happens. The muscle extends the knee and the leg straightens. What do we do now that the legs are straightened but the body is still leaning forward? How would it be possible to lift the torso? How will we straighten the trunk from a position of flexion to extension? Well, let's connect another muscle. Now, this one is going to be connected on the pelvis and the other side to the femur. Now, this muscle is obviously the glutes. In addition, we'll be adding another muscle that will help to lift the trunk. Here, we're going to connect one side to the lower part of the pelvis and the other side to the tibia. Now, these are, of course, the synergist muscles, the hamstrings. Now, by activating these muscles, we're going to see what happens next. Here, the muscles pull the pelvis and the trunk lifts. We can see that the whole movement is performed through the hip joint by hip extension. But we have another problem. The spine is not stable. This is the time to strengthen and stabilize it. This will be performed by your spinal erectors. And in addition, we will also going to be needing to wrap the abdomen in a belt that maintains intra-abdominal pressure. Now this is obviously the transverse abdominus. Let's activate all of these muscles and see if we did it right. Nope, not quite yet. What do you think we're going to have to add? Well, to prevent the knees from collapsing forward, we're going to have to put it back into place by the contraction of the gastrocnemius and the salaris. These will pull the tibia backwards and prevent the knee from collapsing forward. Now let's test the final result. It looks like we have a good squat. The femoris extends the knee, the gluteus maximus extends the hip joint, and the hamstrings and hip abductors assist in the hip extension. The gastrocnemius and plantar flexors, the ankle joint, the core muscles stabilize the torso. Now let's get into the common problems or misconceptions about performing the kettlebell swing. Here you can see a correct version versus an incorrect version. The clear difference is the secondary yellow line on the right and the incorrect version which shows the curvature of the spine. You should of course be primarily concerned with maintaining a rigid and upright posture, breaking at the hips and knees only, and of course controlling your breathing by bracing your core and breathing deeply into your stomach while maintaining a rigid spine. Here you can see the proper form versus improper form when someone is properly performing a squat style or a hip hinge kettlebell swing, the front deltoids are not activated. However, if performed incorrectly, additional stress, wear and tear is placed upon the back and joints, as well as the front deltoid attempting to do its job, which is to lift the arms. This is because you are not raising your torso rapidly or in the correct plane of movement. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope that you found this to be helpful in the biomechanical breakdown of the kettlebell. I'll, of course, have more videos coming with different exercises regarding the kettlebell, as well as stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be releasing the How to Make Kettlebells at Home video, in which I showcase several different kettlebells you can make at home or simply buy on Amazon, which are collapsible and affordable. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel as it costs you nothing and is very helpful to me and others finding me in the algorithm. Let's try to get this information out to more people so that they don't hurt themselves and are making the most effective progress possible. As always, thank you all for all of your continuous support. Stay hard, stay on your grind, and make sure that you're training intelligently and consistently. You have my full support, everybody. Stay hard.